Fresh Noah Lyles' favoritism controversy stirs Paris Olympics as Team USA star reveals struggle with 200 meters finals. Just before the men's 200 meters final event, the temperature has increased. Kenny Bednarek has raised the issue of favoritism toward the host. As per him, the hosts gave Noah Lyles lane 5 to give him a technical advantage. However, Kenny himself received lane 9 at the cornermost position. The sprinter couldn't digest it. On X, he shared the issue. Never seen favoritism like this on a global scale. Meanwhile, things seem to be settled now as Kenny is in lane 8. Noah Lyles is still in lane 5. Does there come any technical superiority with the lane changes? As per the veteran athlete, there may come. One Olympic medalist put a seal on it. Three years ago, in Tokyo, Andre de Grasse took the bronze medal in the 100 meters event. Eventually, he vented his emotion later, and surprisingly, it was not on pace, rather, he complained about his lane position. Just like Kenny Bednarik today, Andre has lane 9. I knew it was going to be a tough one after I drew lane 9. I didn't have a great semi-final, and I knew I had to come out and try and execute as best as I can. Here, the common idea says that from the cornermost position or the outside lane, from 7 to 9, the sprinters fail to see their competitors because of limited visibility. The situation can repeat itself in inside lanes, 1 and 2 as well. In those lanes, the pertaining reason is the tightest nature of the corners. So, the middle lanes rise to be the most effective ones to keep an eye on the opponents on both sides. Right now, Noah Lyles is in the middle lane, and with him, another American sprinter, Arion Knighton, will show up in another middle lane. Lane 6. Ultimately, the much-cherished 200 meters fight is expected to be limited between these two sprinters. Their performances throughout the years speak on behalf of that. Moreover, their best performances in the 200 meters event stand to be side by side, taller than the others in the pack. Apart from that, the newly enacted rules regarding lane placement prioritize the ranks of the sprinters strictly to settle at the lanes. From that perspective, the lanes for Noah Lyles, Kenny Bednarik, and Arion Knighton may raise some uncomfortable questions. In the semi-final round, Letzeli Tobogo was the topper, while Kenny Bednarik followed him. Noah comes later in the third position, so, from that perspective, Kenny's positioning in lane 9 was problematic. He should have been placed in any of the lanes, 5 to 7, leaving a lane for Litzile. Yet the reality is different. Would this mistreatment boost Kenny Bednarik to go against Noah Lyles, all guns blazing? Uh, Noah Lyles, what's the biggest difference between Noah in Tokyo and Noah in Paris? I'd say it's definitely uh, the joy, the joy I have in my heart. It's a lot stronger. It's Nah, not depressed and it's ready to go. It's ready to enjoy time and energy and be in the moment here. You're bringing us joy. How much are you enjoying that rivalry with Jamaica? Hey, I'm here for anybody who wants to take the crown. Now that's what I'm all about, competitors and competing at the highest level. Best of luck, thank you. Thank you. Noah Lyles' controversial 100 meters gold medal race at the 2024 Paris Olympics came down to a photo finish, with Lyles narrowly edging out Jamaica's Kashane Thompson by a mere 0.005 seconds. The slow motion replay showed Lyles' torso crossing the finish line just ahead of Thompson's, securing the American sprinter his first Olympic 100 meters title. While some argued the margin was too close to call, the rules clearly state that the torso, not the head or limbs, determines the winner in a photo finish. Um, Usain, said, um, Usain Bolt said that um, he knows what you need to do to break the world record and he's not going to say it. Um, I'm sure you saw that. Um, did you and your coach look at that or you already know what you need to do yourself? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I mean, what's the, I mean, if he knows and he's not going to share it, why would I listen? <laughs> And, and Kenneth uh, World Lead last week, he says it's going to last just for a couple of weeks. I'm sorry, what? Kenneth World Lead in this 100 last week. Um, he says it's going to last just for a couple of weeks yeah, till you go on the track. Until New York. <laughs> New York Grand Prix. Uh, you have any time fixed in your mind? Well, uh, okay. <laughs> That's all I needed. Well, what did I run last time I opened up? Well, fair enough. And what did I run the time before that? 
Fair enough. And we're on the top for that. <laughs> what, what, All right, then. <laughs> what, 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 one, one more. From, from Bahamas, you, you talked about them keeping the group together. You, Kenny, Kyrie King. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now you just talked about how good Christian Kfred is now. I mean, obviously, it's going to boil down to the national trials and how fast you guys go on the line. Are you still adamant that you should keep the group together or, I mean, make some tweak based on how fast the guys coming? You know, I was just looking at uh, Jamaica is, you know, making a push to try and keep as many people as possible as wild cards and i think that's a great idea because they did form some type of chemistry even if not a lot it's some and that's better than none um and we as americans there's so many of us that are so good you never know who's going to be on the team so having some people that's on the team that are going to be wild cards um that were on that you know but uh bahamas team i think is very important because they have some type of chemistry the lane placement controversy at the Paris Olympics sparked heated debates about fairness and favoritism. Kenny Bednarik expressed his frustration on Twitter, stating he had never seen favoritism like this on a global scale after being placed in lane 9, while Noah Lyles was assigned the more favorable lane 5. Bednarik's sentiment was echoed by André de Grasse, who, after winning 100 meters bronze from lane 9 in Tokyo, admitted that the outside lane made it a tough one due to the challenges of limited visibility of competitors. The controversy highlighted the significant impact lane placement can have on a sprinter's performance and called into question the transparency of the assignment process. The highly anticipated 200 meters showdown between Noah Lyles and Arion Knighton took center stage at the Paris Olympics. The rivalry, which had been brewing for years, reached its climax as the two American sprinters faced off in the final. Lyles, the reigning world record holder with a blistering time of 19.31 seconds, set in 2022, was the clear favorite. However, Knighton's raw talent and rapid improvement over the years made him a formidable challenger. The fact that both sprinters were assigned favorable middle lanes, with Lyles in lane 5 and Knighton in lane 6, only added to the excitement and speculation surrounding the race. The 200 meters final lived up to the hype, with Lyles and Knighton pushing each other to their limits. No Olympic champion. The thing is that you embrace pressure so very well and come out on top. Is there a newfound respect that should be towards you? Uh, no. No. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. I'm not going to hate anybody that doesn't like me. But uh, all I'm going to say is, you know, don't downplay other people just because you don't like someone. Just go to the guy you like. But I, uh, I appreciate anybody who has found respect for me. But to be honest, this crowd, this crowd was amazing. This field was amazing. This is the exact field that I wanted to show up at an Olympic final. Because if I was to lose the, you know, any of those guys in the top three, I would have said, you know, that's well deserved. Talk to me about the race though and how close it was and the time, a personal yeah. best. Yeah, it was a very close race. You know, I'm glad I had Oblique Seville next to me because I was like, yo, I need somebody to put that pressure on me early. Um, I know that in a lot of races, he's been like one or two lanes away from me and uh, he's been able to get out just in that, that, uh, that acceleration phase and I've just been missing it. And I was like, nah, now that you're right next to me, I'm going to make sure that I cover that. And then I, after I passed him, I saw Kashane out there and I was like, just do what I do, hit my top end speed, you know, let it work. And uh, to be honest, I didn't know if I had it. You know, I leaned, but I didn't know I had it. You know, me and Kashane were at the, the end waiting for our names to come up. And I came up and I said, I'm going to be honest, man, I think you got that one. Oh, uh, yeah, but my, my name came up and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm amazing. <laughs> I, and you are, what, what do you take away from this in terms of your legacy? How do you describe it in this moment? In this moment, I've waited a long time. I've, I've seen Jamaicans dominate the 100 and the 200 for so long. And I remember growing up saying, when it's my turn, I'm going to make sure that the U.S. is on top. And he, here it is. Here's my, my time and my, you know, my journey, my moment. And I've, it's such a beautiful thing to see. Enjoy the moment, brother. I thank you. Thank you. The victory was especially sweet for Lyles, who had faced criticism and doubts after his disappointing 100 performance earlier in the games. Meanwhile, Kenny Bednarik, who had been vocal about the perceived favoritism towards Lyles, finished a distant third, unable to match the top two's blistering pace. The result further fueled the debate surrounding lane placement and its impact on race outcomes. Being an outspoken character, Noah Lyles acts like a double-edged sword. He can build and also knows how to decimate things. After claiming the gold medal in the men's 100 meters, the 27-year-old sat down in the press conference sharing tidbits on the upcoming heavy battle on track. He started by praising Kenny and making big revelations about him. He said, 
Kenny definitely put up a fast time at trials, and that definitely woke me up. I was very proud of him, and he is definitely not going to take how he did here in the 100 lying down. The reigning world champion said that his compatriot would shake all the dust from the 100 meters Olympic final and embrace the 200 meters track like nothing else. But he might face a collision. Speaking on his chance, the Olympic champion conceded, None of them is winning. When I come off the turn, they will be depressed. Now, Kenny Bednarek's tag on him being the favorite might add a few more chapters to the rivalry. Let's wait for tomorrow.